morning everybody get prepared for quite a long video i did ask people which how they would prefer this whether to be into two or one most have gone for one so if you need to stop and start obviously please do that's what it's there for and what we're going to be doing today is our smart doll best top now i've done this in a simpler version because some of you may have seen i did do one in a lace weight yarn which you can see is sort of incredibly finer you can see the fineness of the yarn so that is lace weight that would have took so long to actually do as a video because obviously as you can tell the 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 yarn is so fine that it takes a lot longer to actually even just do a round and it takes more stitches because it's fine so that was my lace weight version that some of you may have seen on facebook it doesn't look very good like that it looks great on it though so i'm going to pop that to one side because we don't need that now this is the yarn i made this one in it's a gorgeous variegated yarn and it's got a sparkle in it now i got this from the wool monte last year and i don't know who i got it from but it is a four ply sock wool most of the uh, four ply yarns that come in the skeins or the sock wools are perfect for making dolls clothes of this weight but today i'm going to actually use this one now i do know who this comes from this is from peak district yarns there we go so they're hand dyed yarns that are relatively local to myself um this one is called at the roxy now as the lady explained to me if you're local or of my age group there was a nightclub called the roxy and this is what this has been named after as you can see it's a four ply it's 80 percent merino 20 percent nylon there's 100 grams and then it does it in length because remember it's slightly different you get a lot more for weight in four ply than you would in a double knit yarn so that's just a little bit of detail about what i'm going to be using so that can go over there now just to let you know if you wanted to do a lace weight one i did it in a 2.5 millimeter hook but we're not using that today today we're going to be using a three millimeter hook for the four ply yarn but as i said we're not going to use this one as gorgeous as it is because if i was going to make one i'm going to make a couple to go on my etsy um although i know postage etc is a little bit difficult at the moment um but because i want to make them for my girls i wanted to make a different color so i'm going to pop that one to one side so excuse me stretching across i'm going to bring a little tin in because i want to run the yarn in that got my needle stitch marker a stitch marker needed for some of it but not all of it but it's there just in case it's something that you want to do and obviously my needles and my scissors and the yarn now again there's always a very slight difference in yarn this as i say is a four ply similar to the other one you might find it is very tiny bit thicker or a tiny bit thinner so it's always good to check on your doll how it's fitting because your yarn might be slightly different to mine so we're going to get going as i say it's going to be a long video because obviously for a smart doll outfit it takes longer to make so please be patient but if you want to stop and start whenever the beauty of youtube it's there for whenever you want to look at it so you can just pause it and come back to it later so we're going to be starting with our slip knot you can see the variation in the color already that's gorgeous so i'm hoping this one's going to come out really pretty so hook on not too tight make sure we've got some movement and we start with the boring bit in fact i'm going to have to move you over mrs because i think you're going to get caught up in the yarn so i'm going to pop it over there just for a second and i've got my paper and my pen next to me ready and we're going to be starting with a 50 chain so again a little bit boring for you guys a little trick for counting there um it's very easy to lose count when you're counting above say 30 40 sort of stitches so if you do sort of lose count say if you were doing 100 i do like 50 pop a stitch marker in do another 50 and if i've lost count on that second 50 i know i can just go back to that rather than starting again here we go bear with me so we have one two not too tight three because you're going to need to pick up in this four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen keep moving your fingers up this 16 17 18 19 20 i'm not to be careful because i'm talking i am going to lose track so that's 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 and 30 so we're nearly there 31 32 33 34 35 36 37 38 39 40 i just need 10 more 41 42 43 44 45 46 47 48 
49 and 50. Now, never underestimate a chain because can you see how that is sort of quite nice and flat? I'm hoping you can see that. So it's like a little plait, nice and smooth all the way along. Practice your chain. If you've got a good chain, it gives you a really good basis to a lot of your work. So it is really, really important. Now, basically, I measured that. So it goes round. I'm going to have to bring her back in, aren't I? I'm going to pop her in upside down so you can see. So this is the top bit here. So I had to make sure it went over the bust area here. Now, because this is done in half trebles, it's got quite a stretch. So if your girls, can you see, there's quite a bit of a stretch there. So if your girls have got a larger bust, it will still work. But keep an eye on that just in case you do need to add in a poor old Mirai. Let me turn you right way round. If you're going to be in on it, you might as well be right way round. All right, just hope she doesn't get tangled. Now for our first round, isn't going to be a round. That sounds a bit silly. But what I do find is you could join this chain now together and work around but it's really hard not to get it to twist so what I do depending on what yarn if it's a thicker yarn I can do it but what I'll normally do if it's a finer yarn is I will do a, a DC row even though everything else is going to be in a round this is just going to be a row and then I join I will show you why oh see she's already catching up in it I'm not to move her because she's going to get her fingers caught and I'll end up knocking her on the floor or something. So we're going to do one double crochet into each of these chain. So here we go. Remember double crochet. I am in UK terms. So it's just if you're in the US, they are a single crochet. But because I've not made these too tight, this is now quite easy to get into. So I am going to speed up a little bit after a couple. Now, again, you've done your 50 chain, you know you've got to do 50 double crochet. So you don't really need to watch me do this. You can just pause it, perhaps, or fast forward it until I finish this chain. And you get on with yours and then pop back and see what I'm up to next. Must admit, this is a very, very nice yarn. It's really smooth. The one I used before, the gorgeous, gorgeous colourings and everything, but because it has a filament in it, it's got like a sparkly filament running through it, it was catching don't worry about this curling it will do if you want to straighten it out now you can but you see how the colors are coming i think this is going to be really pretty i do need to make some plain ones for my girls though because i have noticed it's great if they're wearing jeans or some plain trousers or something like that but i've got a lot of items that are like patterned skirts and i've got nothing plain to go with them and i don't like to see sort of the very gay so for example she's got a tartan skirt and i wouldn't really want to see a variegated yarn top you would really struggle to get the colors that would match so i would like to do maybe just a red one something like that so i do need to do some plain ones but i just can't resist this variegated sock yarn so we look all right we're about halfway and again because i've made my chain not too tight it's quite easy to get into the other reason for it not being tight is because when we've done the body of it we've got to go back to the top to do the straps so this chain is going to be gone into twice so it'll be going in from the other direction as well so we're getting there we're getting there it goes a little bit quicker as soon as we move on to our half trebles obviously I like double crochets to start with because I think it gives a nice finish but the half trebles give you more stretch and it grows faster as well of course but a half treble will give you a little bit more stretch so that's why i was mentioning if your dolls have a larger bust that you may need to sort of vary it a little bit but i think there's quite a bit of stretch in that i think you can get away with it but again that will come i wouldn't recommend using a cotton unless you know it's going to fit your girl um, because the cotton doesn't have the stretch Whereas if you can imagine a sock yarn or any other sort of yarn similar, they're designed to have some stretch if you think about it. So they do have to have a bit of movement. So there is our 50 double crochets. And I'm already very pleased in how the colour is coming out. So what I do now is I want to join, but because it's a bit thicker, it's easier. So I'm going to turn it over, make sure I run it flat all the way along my fingers until... I can get to the other end make sure it hasn't twisted now that first stitch is a little bit weird because it sort of tucks itself in 
so I need to pick up both because otherwise it will be a loose stitch and I'm going to do a slip stitch join so now I have joined that little tiny weeny gap can be sewn in with this at the end so don't worry about that <clears throat> I'm still at it with my throat I've already got my drink ready um, I've got what's left of my uh, peppermint tea here that I've been having for breakfast little sip like I said the old throat is okay now but for some reason it still keeps giving way so from here that is your first stitch that you've gone into that you slip stitched into so I'm going to do two chain that two chain is going to count as our first half treble and we're just going to run half treble rounds I'm hoping this is not going to get tangled up I've dropped it in this uh, tub but in the tub I've also got that and it's kind of tangling because it's a fluffy yarn beautiful yarn bit of a nightmare to work with because of the fluff but so if you don't mind that you're okay so that is that first stitch so my next one is here half treble is yarn round into the stitch picking up both pull it through pull it through all three okay yarn round in pull it through pull it through all three and we're going to do that all the way around until we get to this end okay there's going to be no slip stitch join i will warn you that now but don't worry about that till we get there so again you might want to pause me you might want to listen to what i'm doing i don't know um or you can sort of just pause it or slow it down or something like that but it's just one of these half trebles into every single one of those stitches again the patterning comes out slightly different when you use a longer stitch so it's quite nice to see a little bit easier now i think those first couple of rows or rounds or whatever you're working on as a project are always the worst. Oh, catching it now i'm saying it's getting better and i'm dropping it um i do think they're always the worst too i genuinely do not say until i've got rid of my foundation row which was your double crochet row in this particular situation i don't class myself as crocheting as soon as i get past that i go Whew, got that out of the way now I can get on and actually do some crochet because it's always harder because you're working into a chain usually depending on what you're working on of course I do love these colors this is going to be really pretty the only thing is I've got to think of something on the bottom half for her to wear so I've only, well I suppose with the jeans I mean Mirai's got the denim shorts on at the moment the ones that I got from uh, Bella's dolls clothes I think well, I hope I said that right. I always get the S in the wrong place when I say her name. So hmm, I don't know what she needs with this. Something plain, but I don't know, pick out the pink perhaps. I don't know. We'll have to have a think about that. The sewing machine seriously does need to come out. Um I've got so much fabric sat there. I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna say I'm the best sewer, but I am an adequate sewer for making the doll's clothes. So uh, I've got a few items. I got a dress from a charity shop some time back and it's absolutely gorgeous. Not some, too small for me, but I wanted it because of all the layers. It looks real sort of boho and it's got layers of lace and things like that. So it makes a full length dress, I think, for my smart dolls. So that's one because it should be really easy because it's just when it's like that, it's a case of sort of just cutting up the, the length. Um, so as long as you keep the hem of the original. Um, and then making sure it's got a neat single seam down the back or the front, whichever way you're doing it. And then uh, nice and edging at the top and maybe some ribbon straps. That's what I'm thinking of. I'm not going to do anything like that as a tutorial because, as I say, I do not even remotely think of myself as an expert where sewing's concerned. But, you know, I can put some stuff together and uh, which is quite happy with right look we're there now now you're going to be very tempted to slip stitch join because that is what you would normally do with a longer stitch than a double crochet you can get away with doing a spiral system with a half treble not above that but with a half treble looks a bit weird to start with so first of all though i'm going to mark down i've done one round and now I'm going to tell you what you're going to do next in case you want to skip forward. There's going to be another five rounds of this. So let me just show you how I'm going to do it. That is our first two chain. And into the top of that two chain, I'm going to do my next half treble. It feels weird. I know you want to slip stitch join, but you don't need to. And it makes it a neater edge. You'll not notice that when you get round, but be careful when you get round again, because you need to make sure you are going in the top of that stitch. So off we go again. 
So I might see you all in a couple of minutes. I'm not sure what you've decided to do yet. But this is round two of a total of six. So I've got the five. That's why I said you've got five more because you've already done one. So I'm going to go a little bit quicker, says me, as I drop it. I always say that. I go, oh, I'm going to go faster. <laughs> and then I can't do it. Oh, I can't believe how these colours are coming out. I am so happy. I'm not sure how events are going to be going, but this lady is going to be at an event called the Wool Monte. But it's booked for June um, at our local arena in Sheffield. But mm, I don't know. I think they might be pushing it. I know a lot of other events have sort of rescheduled for the towards the end of the year. Um, I don't know. June might be okay, but it's it's in an arena and there's a lot of people. So I'm not quite sure how that works. I mean, I can get the yarn off this lady online if I wanted to. But it is nice to look round at all, all the different ones. And I've got a thing about mini skeins, which are fabulous to get the little four-ply mini skeins. Not so much for the smart dolls, but great to make for the smaller dolls. And you can usually get them quite cheap. Because these skeins, remember, they are hand-dyed, hand-produced, absolutely stunning. But... I know some of you might think this is quite cheap. This was £17 for this skein. There's a huge amount of yarn on it, though. You will get a lot of items out of it. Um, so, yeah, it. some people sort of wanting to pay sort of a pound a ball for something, which I I use the cheaper stuff as well, but every now and again I do like the quality of these sort of yarns. I sound like I'm going a bit croaky again. I mean, as much as I am going to do this as one full video, I might end up having to sort of stop midway, just pausing. I'll have a little drink and then uh, carry on. I'm not, to be honest, totally sure how long this is going to take. I mean, what are we on now? We're on 16 minutes. You know, we've got quite a few rounds to go. Um, we could do it in an hour, possibly, because now it gets past this bit, it's a bit easier. So it's a little bit quicker. Now I haven't doing wrong again i haven't put a stitch marker in because at the moment i'm using this little tail as my stitch marker but if you want to pop a stitch marker in now you can so i know i'm round and as you can see i'm not going to slip stitch join i'm just going to keep going round and round and round so watch where your stitch is though straight into there yeah and off we go again or oh, not <laughs> I'm determined to drop it and he's saying this yarn doesn't catch which it doesn't it's me that's making the error not the yarn the yarn is delightfully soft really nice which means I know it's going to give a great stretch sort of over the doll's body if you do your measurements if I know because when I'm making these I mean especially when they did the lace weight ones I undid it so many times to get the fit across the doll's chest if you get into this point, I would recommend you do try it on the doll. If you think it's not going to fit, you may have to add a couple of stitches in. You shouldn't have to, but uh, let's just sort of play it by ear. People keep asking me, um, do you have to take the head off as well when you're putting these tops on? I try to make everything so you don't have to take the heads off. I don't, well, I haven't ever taken the heads off my girls. I, I don't think I want to. I'm a little bit nervous about doing that. As much as I did actually build Mirai in Japan, not from scratch, just to put the skeleton was already made, but um, I did get to build her up. And obviously I've done my Cortex Gaia, but as soon as the heads are on, I'd rather leave them on. I do take the arms out, only for ease. Some of my tops I make, you can get away with, sort of if you're very careful, put the arms in the air, pop the sleeve bit over and then squeeze them over the head but the arms aren't so bad to take out so please do it carefully though you don't want to cause any damage they are after all only a type of plastic and that can break but obviously the minimum of taking the doll apart is better for me and i'm sure it's better for yourselves so this does go over the head. In fact, you will have seen the headband and bikini top I did in previous. Um, I think, I, yeah, I did do that in a four ply. I'm almost round again. Let me just mark this off before I say anything else. There we are. So I'm going to mark that off again. So if you didn't want to go any further, you'd had enough. Another row, 
you've got a little bikini band out there or you've got a doll headband because it does fit about the same size so off we go again now we've got to three out of the five because i didn't start marking it down until i got to that second one so we're not doing too bad at all i've got to stop saying that every time i say something it goes wrong there we go oh i like the pink that has just come out nice short variegation this some yarns have a very long variegation and you're waiting and waiting and waiting for the color to change i don't like that because especially for the dolls it's a smaller item and sometimes you could have made 90 percent of the item and then you get the color change on the last round that's no good to me but this is changing so frequently it also <clears throat> excuse me for a second <coughs> Don't worry, it's not an anything bad cough. <laughs> I think it's just a combination of leftover from me not being well um, X amount of weeks ago and a little bit of hay fever put together and it's causing a bit of an irritation. But I don't want to stop just yet because otherwise the video, as much as it will be in one piece for you guys, uh, when I'm actually uploading it, I've got to upload it in quite a few sections um, and it can affect the quality. I mean, this will be in two sections because on my camera will only do sort of about, I think it's for some reason, 33 minutes. It's a very odd number, but it will only do 33 minutes at a time and then it goes on to a second recording. Almost there. Now, this is the fourth round, remember? So there is only actually one more in half trebles. And then we're going to move on to a little pattern, which is so simple. And it's sort of alternating sort of half treble rows and double crochet rounds. I said rows, didn't I? And then I said rounds. Rounds. These are all rounds. Make sure you're only picking up those top two because I nearly didn't then. Apologies if I am going a little bit quick. But as I've said, they're just the same rounds over and over again for X amount Oh, I'm pop that up and then uh, where should we go in there so you can pause me and just do yours and then come back to whatever I'm doing people do ask me for patterns for certain things I mean these are all my own designs let me just mark this down a second one more round to go can you see because I'm not slip stitch joining it's making it sort of smooth if I'd slip stitch joined every stitch, every round, it would start to get a line and it looks really messy. I mean, you can say you can't get away with this with trebles. No, well, not like this you can't, but half trebles you can get away with it. So last round on the half trebles. Um, what I was saying is people are asking me for patterns. Now, I have made this pattern. This is my pattern. It is written on a scruffy piece of paper. Um... And I do write them up in my book eventually, otherwise I've got lots of scrubby pieces of paper all over the place. Um, but I can't make up my mind which way to do it, because I do sell some patterns on Etsy, not many. I think I've only got one doll hat pattern on there and a couple of amigurumi, sort of chocolate orange cover ones. But I can't make up my mind which way to do it, because it's very hard to make sure patterns are easy for everybody to understand. And also um, the sizings of the dolls. Because I don't want to say, oh, here's a smart doll pattern. Please buy my smart doll pattern. And then you've got it. And like I said, there's different bus sizes. And then you go, oh, it doesn't fit. That was sort of not very good. You know, I want people to be happy with what I create. And that is why sometimes I'm reluctant with patterns as much as I can write a pattern up. Because I want to make sure everybody can understand it. It can cause complications if they don't understand it. And a lot of people don't like patterns. A lot of people prefer just to work straight from a YouTube tutorial or just watch somebody else rather than reading a pattern. And again, you've got the UK, US. Uh, I don't know what other patterns are written like. I know a lot of the Japanese patterns are almost purely diagrammatic. So again, that's another issue to come in. I don't know. I might do. I don't know whether people would want them. I mean, obviously, if they're on my YouTube video, um, they're a free pattern that you're watching. But I might put some variations. Especially as it's easier at the moment, because obviously 
you can't sort of well we, we are having posts we're having posts here and people are buying things and people are posting things etc etc but there's definitely a delay on parcels and there's definitely an issue obviously if people don't want to go to post offices and things like that so yeah perhaps a digital download might be a good idea where are we yes i am round yes so as i just said that could if you wanted to stop there and you're going to make it as a bikini bandeau or something like that i would do what I'm going to do next is one more double crochet round and then you could leave it at that. Oh, that will make a great hairband actually. In fact, I might make some hairbands for them to match their tops. That might be quite nice because we're coming to summer. I am working on a, a couple of summer hats, but you know, you're not going to be wearing the woolly hats that I normally make during the summer, depending on where you are in the world, of course. Um, not everywhere has sun at this time of the year. Right, a double crochet round. So again, there's no need to slip stitch join. We can just go for it. This one reminds me of sort of very flower garden colours. I think they're just so pretty. So remember, just double crochet now. So we've changed from our half trebles to our double crochet. The reason being is it just tightens that little bit up. So this sort of sits very slightly under the bust. So I wanted a double crochet round just to tighten it. You can vary sort of the sort of th thickness, that's the wrong word. But say if you had a straight piece of crochet, say if it was just a flat square. If you alternate your stitches, you will find some lines are tighter than others so if you're doing a half treble it's going to be looser a treble is going to be looser again and a double crochet will be tighter so you can sort of play around with structure rather than having to decrease and increase all the time you can just do it with different stitches so for example my half trebles are because i need it to stretch over the bust if it had been a double crochet it would but it would have been tighter um i think a treble would be too loose because i don't like the idea of it being a see-through top, no, it sounds a bit silly because I know some people want that, but I think there's a time for certain see-through areas and there's a time not. I, I want it to be look like a garment that somebody would walk down the street in, for example. So there's a there's a time and a place for the see-through. Nearly there. Let's so say this yarn is I'm really, really pleased with it. I'm really enjoying working with it actually. We're going to be starting on a little tiny pattern. Like I say, it's not much. I mean, if you look, we're about halfway through the top now. And what time are we up? I would say it's only 27 minutes. I remember, what, good three, four minutes I was talking at the beginning. So that wasn't counted. So again, I've relied on that line. I'm also thinking where that is will be the back. So this is the back of my top so think about that as well especially when you come to placing your straps that is the back where that line is so that's working as my stitch marker really so here we go pattern 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 it's it should fit put it that way we've got 50 stitches so the combination i've given you should fit 10 times if you are out of stitch, we'll sneak one in. You get away with it at this point. So the first stitch we're going to be doing is a half treble again. No, oh, but don't go through the other bit. So that's one half treble. We're going to do another half treble. We're going to do another half treble. So you've got three half trebles. Okay. Then you're going to do two chain. One and two. We're going to miss two. One and two. And into the next stitch, a half treble. And another two half trebles. I'll stop and explain it in a second. Two chain. Miss two. Three half trebles. Not in one stitch. In One in each one. So I'm going to stop there. So basically, what I've said is, you've done one, two, three half trebles. You have to watch that one because you may miss it when you get round. Then I've done two chain and I've missed two. Then I've done one, two, three half trebles, two chain, missed two. So that's the combination we're going to do all the way around. I think I may put that in the sort of uh, details at, at the top just to sort of explain that combination. But basically, it's three trebles, two chain, Miss two stitches, three trebles. And you're going to keep doing that all the way around. 
I mean, you may not need it in a written form, but I might just pop it down as a note. Right, two, one and two, miss two, three half trebles. So you see it moves quite quickly, this. Two chain. And three half trebles. Two chain. Miss two. Three half trebles. So as I said, this should should get fit in ten sets. We will see when we get round to the other side whether I've counted my stitches right. Sometimes when you've done the joining, you know, when you've joined the first bit together and turned it into a round, you can sometimes miss a stitch if you're not careful. But one stitch is easy to add in at this point and you will not see that you have done it. So don't worry about that. So again, two chain. Miss two. Three half troubles. Oh, look at that one. Can you see what I've done there? If you get that, I've split my yarn. Take it out. Do it again because it will leave a weak spot on your work. And for the sake of taking out a couple of stitches, it really doesn't matter. So there's my three trebles. My two chain, they're going a bit tight now, but they'll be okay. And then uh, miss two and three trebles. One, two. We've got a um, street cleaning lorry going past. I don't know whether it's going to be picked up on here. Um, don't know if I make a noise. It's just going past the house. We live on a main road, so it doesn't help. Although since everything's been shut down, it's been very quiet on this road, which I'm not complaining about. Right, so, are we round? Good question. Are we? We are. Now, this very back section here, it will land that there's three half trebles there and three half trebles. So you ultimately got six across where the back is. Yeah? So can you see? We've got the holes, we have got six, and we've got a hole. So we are across. We have done it. It is right, as far as I can see. Now, this next round is going to be a double crochet round. But it's a bit weird, because you know there's two chains there. So normally you think, oh, I'll do two trebles there. Well, we're not. We're going to do two trebles. Double crochet, should I say. You're not. You're actually going to do three. So we're only going to pick up two there. No, it sounds weird, but trust me on this. Pick up two, and then three three now can you see i'm going right into the hole i'm not going to try and pick up the chain i'm going into the hole so that's two and that's three we're going to pick up two of these now the reason being is i'm going to take the hook out a minute and move those along because if you were actually going into the top of the half trebles this might be worth watching if you've not paused that would be your first one that would be the second one that would be the third one but this sort of covers over that first one so let it i'm gonna pause we have post bear with me hi i'm back that wasn't actually a bad time to stop on there yes the postman was there is they've been really good actually because what basically they do is that because where we are we've got a little garden at the front they put the parcel on the step they step away and then knock on well they knock on your door and then step right away and you can just pick up your parcel from there so it is quite good it's just a case of sort of making sure you sort of wash your hands and things afterwards perhaps but I'm quite pleased with it. It's weird because I ordered a lot of things sort of a couple of weeks ago. Um, and things are slowly coming in bit by bit. So I'm going to be getting the odd parcel. There's one though that I really not, can't understand it because it's been nearly a month now. I do know that the parcel company are at, you know, Royal Mail are having problems. So it'll be a surprise when it comes anyway. Well, this was, this is a little cutie. I'm going to give you a quick, 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 quick look. I've just opened it. <gasps> It's a dolly. There's a surprise. Right, but I'm going to be doing a review on the little Lottie dolls. I got one from a charity shop once and it was it is so cute and nice quality. I thought, well, let's have a look what the actual doll looks like. So let's get back to doing this. Right, so what I was saying is, because these stitches sort of go over that first one, just make it three in there. It looks a bit weird and it's sort of contradicts terms this is where again writing a pattern would be difficult because i'm almost saying miss that first one because i've done three there but yeah i suppose that is what i'm saying so then i'm just going to do a double crochet in the two remaining half trebles and then i'm going to do three in the two chain space yeah you get that so i'm missing that first one because that's going over it and then I'm just doing two in the next two. I hope that makes sense. If you really want to, if you find that sort of 
uncomfortable, which you might do if you're not used to doing stitches, you can do two and then one in the sort of the stitch there if you want and sort of one in each of the half trebles, but I just prefer to do it this way. So I'm going to go three in my chain space and as I say, because that sort of covers that first treble, then one in each of the two remaining half trebles. Yeah, so off we go. So that is the combination, three in the space, one in each of the two remaining half trebles. It just makes it easier to see, I think. I'm trying to think while I'm saying that, how I could verbalise that into a pattern. I think that's the other thing when I'm doing a pattern. I do a lot of, not cheats, but I have a lot of little methods that sort of sit different to a written official pattern. I mean, when I have to do it for Simply Crochet Magazine, etc., I have to be quite sort of strict with how I'm writing. And it sometimes goes against how I personally crochet because I think there's sometimes easier ways of doing things and they're hard to be in written form. So I'm hoping I'm going to give you some tips as we go along. If you've got any tips for me, please let me know as well. We're always learning. Never be fooled to think you know everything. Right, we're almost there, aren't we? So we need the two. Oop. There we go. And we're round. And it's fitted great. So you can see we get these little holes all the way around. So we're going to repeat that combination of these two rows again. Round, should I say. Where we're going to do the half trebles and the chains. And then we do a DC round. So off we go. We need three half trebles don't we so can we fit them in we can because you need to make sure they line up oh nearly did a treble one two and three two chain one two miss two one two and as you can see then that will bring us in to the top of that other treble one two and three two chain I'm, gonna try, I'm trying to sort of angle it now so you can actually see a little bit more detail so miss one miss two this is our third that's going to be your first half trouble one two three two chain miss two half trouble times three one two and three, two chain, miss two, half treble, two, and three, two chain, miss two, half treble. So this is just exactly the same as you just did on not the last row, the row before. You're just repeating those two rounds. I keep saying round and then row, don't I? Just ignore me. <laughs> One, two, miss two, three, half trebles. One. Two and three, two chain. As you can see the length of the work, you sort of be aware that we're not far because it's not a very long top. You could do this combination more and make a longer top if you wanted. If you really wanted to go for it, you could take it full length and make a dress. The only thing with the smart doll is I do do when I'm making a dress, I do a lot of shaping around the waist area. Um, because as you know yourself by it being an owner they have the tiniest of little waists but then their sort of hips come out quite considerably so it, if you're wanting it to look like a fitter dress you've either got to do it so tight it slides on if you're not going to do any shaping or you do have to shape and again I know people keep asking me for that dress that they've seen it's, it's just again it's going it would take so long to show in a video i mean this is taking long enough this is just a top um let alone to do the full dress and again there's a lot of shaping involved i literally did a bit put it on mirror i did a bit and i kept sort of decreasing and shutting increasing and all sorts all as i went right so we're round so again remember you have the six across the back which is okay double crochet time one two we come to the chain, three in the chain, one, two, and three, I'm going to go a little bit faster now, two, in the half trebles remaining, three in the chain, remembering the chain's covering up that first half treble, so we just go for the second two, one, 
Can you have the second two? Two and three. Oh, I don't know. Three DCs in the chain. One in each of the remaining two half trebles. Off we go. So we're getting the same stitches. You're still getting the same amount of stitches. It's just that we've sort of angled it differently, that's all. But I think it makes it look neater. I don't know if any of you have done the selfie for uh, the uh, Mirai Store selfie collage. I've uh, submitted mine. I hope it uh, gets chosen because I didn't do it last time. Um, it's not something really I do very often take a picture of myself. But I'd taken the one that I've sent in ages ago and I was really pleased with how it worked out. It was when I got Gaia. Um, so I thought, oh, I've got a nice photo for once, so uh, I'll send it in. And I've done the workroom one. I don't know if anybody's seen that as well. Um, again, I was quite pleased with that. But I don't, I get, and I don't know whether they've been accepted or not yet. Because I know loads and loads of people from looking on the Smart Doll group have uh, put in selfies. There's some amazing pictures. It's really cool to actually see people. Because um, usually we just see the dolls, don't we? Here we are, we're back round again. So, we've done. You can see the holes. They're nicely lined up now, which is important. Unless you're deliberately not lining them up. But we do need them to line up. We have one more round where it's going to be very similar to the last one. It's the last two of the bottom. So we're going to be doing that half treble one, you know, where we do the three, two chain three. So we're going to do that one first. One, two and three half trebles, two chain. So this is still the same as what we did before. Miss two, three half trebles, Two chain, miss two, three half trebles, all the way around. Two chain, miss two, three half trebles. The trick is you need to make sure you've got the same amount of stitches. Two chain, miss two, three half trebles. We've got a pretty grey coming in now. That's quite nice. Oh, no, I've gone to pink already. It changes colour that fast. Two chain. I went into a pink, as I say. I thought I'd go pretty grey there. Or oh, more of a lavender, perhaps, now than a grey. Very pretty, though. Two. One. Two. And three. Two chain. Almost there. So three trebles. Two chain. Miss two. Three trebles. We're nearly there. Two chain. And the last miss two. And then the last three half trebles. And that is literally the last of the half trebles as far as this patterning is concerned. Now we're going to be, you know, last time we did just double crochets all the way around and just double crochet, three double crochets into the chain space. Well, now we want a little bit of a loop. So we'll bring my eye back in. Can you see how we've got like a little shape in? So it gives a little bit of a scallop edge. That's what we're going for next. So into the chain spaces will be a little bit different to last time. That's why I said this was a slightly different round. You're still going to do double crochets where it's not the chain. So in two of those trebles. Now in the chain space, you're going to do one double crochet, three trebles, one double crochet. So the trebles, not half trebles. So double crochet into the chain. Yarn round, pull through two, pull through two for a treble. Yarn round into the space, pull through, pull through two, pull through two. One more time for the treble. Yarn round into the space, pull through two, pull through two. Double crochet. Yep, so can you see you get that little sort of, sort of uh, petally shape almost. Right, remember we're only doing two of these. One double crochet in the top of each of the remaining two half trebles. Into the chain space. Double crochet. Three trebles. Or not. <laughs> Ooh, a little white one now. So that's our third treble. 
and a double crochet. Double crochet in the remaining two half trebles because you've covered over that first one, remember? And then into the chain space, we have a double crochet. We have three trebles, so that's one treble, two treble, three treble, and one. I'd recommend you do actually sort of write it down as I've said that. So you'll remember then, you don't have to sort of really listen to me, but you'll remember that in every single chain space, it's one double crochet, three trebles, one double crochet. Then you just have two double crochets in the remaining two of these uh, half trebles that are left. Because remember, the number one is covered over with our previous stitch. So I'm on my three trebles. One, two, three. Remaining two. Now, I don't really know what how to categorise this pattern. Um, I think if you're a beginner that's been doing a bit of crochet for a while, it depends what you class yourself as a beginner. I mean, if you've never crocheted before, I would not recommend you did this. I would recommend you sort of start with the beginner techniques, get your sort of nice tension going there and everything before you start sort of make, taking it a little bit further. Unless you want to just jump in with both feet, which is what I did when I taught myself. But so it's entirely up to you. But I'm not going to re recommend this as a beginner's pattern. I would quite comfortably say an intermediate. Or somebody who just does a lot of crochet um, and has built up quickly you know everybody's different so again it's very hard to judge I mean what is beginners what is intermediate what is advanced I don't know there's some patterns I've picked up and I haven't got a clue what they are so I'm back in the chain space again one two and three and I've got a number of years under my belt with it one two we're back into a chain space again so DC, three trebles, one, two, three, and DC. I think with this yarn as well, they are actually starting to look like little petals because of the colouring. I think it's really, really pretty. I'm really pleased I got this. Two double crochets in the remaining trebles. Trebles, half trebles. We have a double crochet in the chain space. We have three trebles. One, two, three. Double crochet. Last bit. Can you see we're there? We're there. We're actually finished that bit. We've only got the straps to do. One and two. My last stitch, slip stitch, because I think it just makes it flatter. That's why I always do a slip stitch up. Oh, I can snip me on at the end there. So you can see you've got your basic pattern there. I'm going to make sure that line that's up at the center. Yep, so you can see the shape. Now, if you wanted to, you could leave that. It doesn't look much like that, but it would go on as a boob tube. You don't have to do the next stage if you don't want to. Now, this bit, you do have to make sure you get your straps in the right position. That is why I mentioned this being your measure for your back, this one. So this is your starting point. I'm going to sew this one in to get rid of it just because it makes it a bit easier to work. So I'm just stitching it in. In fact, I might stitch the other one in as well and just pop a stitch marker in instead. Make sure it goes through quite a few times. You don't want your work coming undone anywhere. That will do. Careful when you're cutting it that you're not cutting any of your work. I've done that before. That is mortifying. Yep, we'll get rid of this end as well, just to make it a little bit easier for you to see, I think. There's having different sort of yarns. Now, can you remember we said this bit here needs joining? So I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to take it in to that first stitch and pull it together. I'm going to make a little knot actually to make sure it is secure. And then I can thread it through and get rid of the yarn that's spare. This needle seems a bit thick for this yarn. It's usually okay. This doesn't seem to want to go through. There we go. That will do me. Again, make sure you don't cut your work. And then, as I say, if you wanted to, we could say you've got a boob tube. But we want some straps on here. So... 
you can still see there's a tiny bump actually where the middle is that will cover over when you do your next round so don't worry about that so i'm not going to put a stitch marker in because that bump is giving me oh that is the middle so that's the middle back so if you line it up let's have a look how the holes work sometimes they line up sometimes they don't so if you look we have a row of holes in your center point from your back so we're saying that is the middle so i will put a stitch marker there actually just to show you so i know that is my center point okay so you know your straps have got to be approximately there and there that's something you can play about with on the distance i'm going to just show you the measurements i did so i've got my yarn again and i'm going to pick up at the back here so if you remember when we did our patterns there was a six across the back so i'm just going to pop in so i'm going to squeeze in there sometimes where there's a knot it's sometimes a bit difficult to get in oh if i can hold it there we go and i'm going to pull the new yarn in do a little chain and then i'm also going to do a double crochet into that same stitch okay it anchors it a little bit so that's the first stitch and i'm going to do five more so we have one now we're going into chain here so it's a bit difficult three four five remember this is the first chain that you start with one two three four five and one more so you can't always see it so that takes a bit of practice and that's why i say maybe it's not a beginner pattern i am now going to do let's have a look how many chains did i do 25 chain keep them tight and neat one two three four five six seven eight 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, just 5 more to go, 21, 22, 23, 24 and 25. So now we've got to get it over to the other side. So you can count if you want to be really exact. I'm just going to turn it over. Now I know this is the middle, so I know I want it about there. Yeah, that I think that is comfortably where I'm going to pop mine. So, if you want to count it, you can do. In fact, we'll have a little count afterwards, perhaps just to show you. I'm just double checking what I've got. Da -da -da -da. Join to the front point. So, did I say about there? There, I'm going in. I'm going in. And I'm going to do a double crochet there. Then I'm going to double crochet across. So, that'll see how many I get. That's two three four sometimes hard to see when it's chained five six seven eight look we're at the middle now eight so that took me eight to get to the middle so i'm gonna need another eight to get to equal side aren't i so we have one two three four five six seven and eight so that should be yeah that looks about right positioning doesn't it so now we need our 25 chain again so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. A lot of counting in this pattern. 21, 22, 23, 24 and 25. Oh, and don't drop it off the hook. I didn't, I didn't lose it though, so I'm okay. So now turn it over again. And if you look, we need it roughly equal to the other one. Now, if you want to be really strict, you could count how many you've missed here. So we did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I would have said that was. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, which brings me to about there. Does that look okay? I think it needs to go over another one. In you go. That stitch mark is annoying me now because it's rattling. So again, here, I want you to do a double crochet join or not it fell out <laughs> put it back in pull it tight so i don't want it loose at all double crochet and now we're going to do we should have some double crochets left to get back to that back so we'll carry on round till we get to the back 
some of this is so you definitely might need to watch me rather than listen to me sometimes a little bit difficult to get through where you've done any joining but be careful and you'll do it so now I'm going to just go straight into that very first double crochet and double crochet in it and we're going to double crochet along that until we get to the strap and then over the strap or the chain the 25 chain this bit's a bit fiddly you are going to do 25 double crochets now it sometimes feels like it's a lot so that's what we're working over and it can it can be difficult it can twist so you do need to take your time and keep it nice and steady because it'll wiggle about quite a lot so i'm going to do 25 chain uh, chain 25 double crochet over the chain so that was three Four. I've done this a few times so it's a little bit easier six seven oh it says me I do it wrong eight nine see how it jumps off your hook sometimes ten eleven twelve don't worry if it's all concentrated in one area we'll spread, spread, uh, spread it out later if I can speak 13, I've lost count, but that'll do 40, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 23, 24, oh lovely rose colour, and 25. Now you're going to go, oh but it's not going to cross, it's fine. Take your hook out and basically just gently move it along and you'll find it's fine. It was just because it bunches up there while you're doing it, that's all. So right into that very base one, I want to do a double crochet because I want to keep it nice and firm double crochet along the front in every single one of the double crochets you did till we get to the second strap and then you're going to repeat that process of 25 rather wiggly double crochet stitches over the chain if I can take that out now we don't need to know it's centre do we we know it is and then we're going to have hopefully a try on with our Mirai and see whether it does actually fit I hope it does because it's a different yarn there's always that risk when you use a different yarn. It should be okay. So we're almost, that one's in the way, move that out at the chain. So make sure you double crochet into the bottom of that bit where the chain comes out of. Makes it nice and firm. And now it's our 25 over the chain, which again, it wiggles about a bit. So it is a bit of a pain. One, two, three. Four. take your time over this bit if you're not sure that's five six seven eight nine and ten because it is important this bit's smooth because it's very visible eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen 16, we're almost there. 17, it's bunching up again, but it'll be okay. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, oh, and 25. So I'm going to take the hook out and just shuffle them along because they're clearly all squished together. There we go, so they're in position again. Grab my yarn, got just a couple more double crochets to do when we're finished. Double crochet into the very bottom one because it's of the chain and otherwise your chain looks a bit loose. So it's important to go into that bottom one and then just do as a double crochet. Just remember only to centre back because we did actually start centre back. So you're only going back to centre back. Slip stitch finish. And we have finished now that second part of the video came to 26 minutes i've got a feeling the other one was about the same so i think we're looking 
Okay, at my speed, you can argue that you may want to go slower or faster. It was about an hour. I I'm quite happy with that. And we have a little vest top. Nice, simple little vest top for a smart doll. Should we get rid of these ends and then we can try it on her, I think. Let's see whether, whether I've done it right. I hope I have. I know I have. Right, so I'm going to turn it inside out to sew these ends in. Should have threaded it after the fact, shouldn't I? Would have been easier. So in we go. Um, because we've got some nice double crochet rows or rounds, it's quite easy to thread through. So I'm going to go one way. And I'm going to go back the other way. And my magnet's a nightmare. <laughs> it's brilliant as it is. That's one. Not sure who this will be. Shall Gaia or she Tozy? I don't know. I think the green looks great on Mirai. So I think Mirai can keep the green. I don't know. She Tozy does look good in pinks. But... Uh, Guy, really, she's got a gorgeous sort of skin tone. It'll do anything. Whereas she shows he's very pale, so you've got to get the right colour. Although she does look great in greys and uh, blues. Right. Snip. Turn it the right way around. Make sure everything's smoothed out. Straps as well. And shall we see if it fits? Now, I'm going to take a wig off because it does get in the way. So there we go. And I'm going to take her arms out carefully. She's a little bit squeaky. She's my, my oldest girl. Perhaps I could do with a little bit of foot. Uh, oh, that one came out easy, didn't it? Right, so this is how it comes off now. It just slips over the bust, up and straight over the head. So it was easy enough to do. So let's see, let's pop this one back on you, Mirai. Right? So over the head, pull it down, pull it down. Oh, that's lovely. You've got, again, a little bit of stretch if you've got a larger busted girl, so it will fit. Fasten my straps down. They always look weird till I get your arms in. Right, so I want it a little bit lower on her body. That will do nicely, I think. Let's get your arms in the right way. That's one. And there's the squeaky one. Two. I will pop your wig back up. Although I do think they look quite cute without wigs. And there we have your top for our Mirai. And I think that works out. She's got the cable there. Works out quite nicely. It's got a nice fit on the back. I don't like to see sort of baggy sort of tops it so it clips into her waist nicely there and I think that's really pretty the yarn over the moon with definitely been making a couple of more of these and like I say I think they might go on uh, on the Etsy because I can do these a little bit cheaper for people whereas if I'm doing the really fine uh, lace weight it, it, it takes twice the time and obviously the yarn is way more expensive so I think they'd be quite nice. I think people would like them for you guys who don't crochet. So I might pop some, a couple of those on. I think I need to draw a picture of them in this one as well. Because I've got photos of this one. But I said I've done this one for the clip. Perhaps I need one of each. So have a, I might have to take a photo before I finish uploading the video. But thank you for the patience of watching. Because that was a very long video. Um, I'm guessing around an hour. Because we're on 30 minutes now on the second half hope you enjoyed it hope you found it sort of useful and relatively easy to follow because like i say it was a little bit more complicated than doing a hat um please let me know how it goes please post your photos on um, sort of facebook instagram whatever if you're already following me or i'm following you etc etc please tag me um so i love to see sort of my items on other people's dolls i've seen loads of hats and that is really really nice so please tag me please like subscribe and share if you're already not a subscriber it's great to get those numbers lifting up thank you very much for watching keep safe and well and i will see you all very very soon